Hello, my name is Michael Sitar, um, and welcome to uh, Rego's Ultimate LiDAR Webinar Series. Um, I am Managing Director for Rego Canada, as well as the Airborne Division Manager for Rego USA. My name is Peter Riga. I'm Manager of Rego's Airborne Laser Scanning Business Division here in Austria. And together we want to give an update on this year's new products in the field of Airborne Laser Scanning. Um, so in the following 30 minutes, we'll present the latest announcements and product releases from Regal for the airborne survey market. This will include a performance upgrade of the VQ580 Mark II, uh, our small area mapper, to a new powerful version, which provides mid to wide area capability, the new VQ580 Mark IIs. Uh, we will also introduce to you two new wide area mapping systems, the VQ1260 and VQ1460. For corridor applications and complex target mapping, we have a new lightweight multi-scan sensor, the VUX160. A uh, brief discussion about a new version of our VQ840G topobathy sensor, the VQ840GL. Uh, it's received a mild facelift and a significant reduction in weight. We will also discuss a new scan data uh, or uh, gap detection feature of Ryacquire for in-air QA purposes. And finally, we'll provide a status update of the STC certification process of our VQX wing pod for small aircraft installations. Now, please be aware that there are data sheets for the new sensors to be presented today. They're available in the download um, bar in the GoToWebinar um, uh, toolbar. Please download at your convenience, or you can also access them at our website at www.regal.com. Okay, um, first uh, let's have a look at our current lineup of urban laser scanners and systems for area mapping applications. On this slide, starting from left to right, the VQ480 Mark II and the VQ580 Mark IIs, operating at 1.5 and 1 micron wavelength, are intended for regional and medium area mapping applications. They have got an identical form factor, and due to that, they can be easily swapped, which is hopefully an advantage when it comes to system integration and certification of manned uh, helicopter and aircraft installations. The next instrument is the VQ780 Mark IIs, which is typically operated from manned aircraft. Um, this instrument is extremely popular um, because of its regular point distribution. And this defines uh, the VQ780 Mark IIs series as a standard airborne laser scanner for wide area mapping in many parts of the world, and especially in uh, European countries. And uh, as this is more or less just the laser scanner, um, there was a demand for a laser scanner system, which incorporates an IMU, GNSS system and cameras, but with the same characteristics of the VQ780, um, and especially because of its regular point distribution, um, this led to the development of a new sensor series which is the VQ1260 and the VQ1460, which we will present in, the, in detail in the following slides. Together with the also very popular VQ1560 Mark IIs and its innovative and unique crossfire scan pattern, we have expanded now the instrument series for wide area mapping applications from Regal. Let's start um, with the VQ580 Mark IIs. This is the improved successor of the VQ580 Mark II, as I mentioned, with the identical form factor. Um, it can be equipped with an internal Aplanix AP Plus board stack and an IMU92, which is the equivalent of the AP50 Air from Aplanix, or uh, with the external IMU57, which is the equivalent of the AP60 for highest accuracy. The most outstanding feature is its extended measurement range of up to 2,450 meters at a pulse repetition rate of uh, 300 kilohertz. And this translates to an increase in possible area acquisition rates of 50 to 90% depending on the point density requirements. Finally, the VQ580 Mark II S um, is, has been already included in the STC of the new VQX1 wing pod. Maybe you have seen uh, today's release of the video on YouTube. Um, we will show this video uh, at the end of this presentation. Uh, 
this instrument or this um, uh, setup should not be only uh, considered for small area projects um, because of these uh, improvements of the VQ580 Mark IIs. Uh, the VQX1 wind pod equipped with this instrument is perfectly suitable for wide area projects in remote areas as it might be much cheaper to equip an aircraft which is available on site with the wind pod than to ferry a fully equipped survey plane. And maybe you can read it on the, in this chart. We are talking about hundreds of square kilometers per hour, which you can uh, capture. Now, um, we are very excited to present our new high density and wide area mapping systems, the VQ1260 and the VQ1460, which have been developed with many new innovative ideas from both ourselves and, of course, with the input of our esteemed customers. Um, the object objective of this instrument was to develop a new sensor platform that would uh, simplify the user experience, improve sensor ergonomics, and reduce the installa installation footprint. We want to maximize data quality, increase the overall productivity, and improve serviceability, as well as incorporate a purpose-built design philosophy to support future upgradability and performance enhancements. Um, the exterior design takes into account the requirements of operation uh, in the confined environment of an aircraft cabin. As you can see, it features dedicated and separated panels on top for connectors and user interfaces for easy handling. The form factor also might be uh, what you can tell from the pictures here um, is similar to that of the VQ1560 series with a diameter of about 400 millimeters. Uh, and the height of 400 meters, millimeters as well, while the VQ1260 has a height of about 250 millimeters. It's more compact design. A new electronics platform was developed um, in order to increase the internal bandwidth, which enables capturing high number of returns, as well as full wavefront data at high laser pulse repetition rates. There is a limit with the uh, VQ1560 at the moment. Um, which um, has been enhanced. And of course, the new electronics platform um, supports also future performance upgrades. There is a new, very innovative uh, optical front end design, um, which uh, features a separated emit and receiver path. And this optimizes the suppression of crosstalk due to atmospheric clutter, which results in clean raw data sets, virtually eliminating post-processing noise filtering. Um, also, the new electronics uh, enables to integrate an onboard data recorder. This eliminates the need for additional external uh, device like the data recorder for the 1560. All of this is now integrated. The minimum number of cabling is required, so this means higher reliability. The data recorder uh, features up to four disks with 16 terabytes, up to 16 terabytes each. And we simultaneously write um, scan data and imagery. Then as expected for a system, uh, the instrument integrates a high-end IMU GNSS system. Um, there is a dedicated bay, which is tightly coupled to the optical front end um, for maximum data accuracy. And uh, typically, we implement the Planix OEM uh, AP60 sensor. Then, um, similar to the VQ1560, the new sensors have also a camera bay for up to two cameras, which are now aligned side by side. The camera types include RGB, near infrared, or dual camera for open systems, um, thermal infrared, as well as dual camera systems with longer focal length for higher resolution and, and uh, smaller GSD on the ground at higher altitudes. Then, and this is a very nice feature, is very uh, modular design of the instrument, which allows to upgrade from the VQ1260 to VQ1460, as well as this um, provides a solid base for further future upgrades. Then we have got a new onboard graphical interface, um, which is available 
to provide system status information such as uh, laser parameters, eye safety distance, proper genus S sync, remaining hard disk storage capacity, the laser safety button, and more. Last but not least, um, the instrument fits the gyro stabilized mounts like the GSM 3000 or 4000 from SOMAC. As always, um, let's have a look at our performance charts. How do this, the new instruments compare to the existing VQ780 Mark IIs and VQ1560 Mark IIs? Here, let's take a closer look um, where um, we want to see the area collection rates in square kilometers per hour versus a targeted point density. So the point density on the horizontal axis and the area rate square kilometers per hour on the vertical axis. These charts are calculated by using right parameter, which iteratively um, optimizes uh, scan and flight param parameters like the pulse repetition rate, uh, laser power, scan rate, flying speed, and flying al altitude. And uh, the software tries to maximize the area collection rate. Um, Rai parameter, I mentioned this in the past, uh, quite often is a uh, software which is um, free for download from our homepage. Um, the new version includes all the latest instruments we are presenting today and legacy instruments, so you can do your own research and uh, analysis on well, you have the efficiency you might gain from, from various instruments and the advantage of new instruments over maybe uh, older instruments from the past. So the new instruments um, are compared in these charts with the VQ780 and 1560. Um, this is given for a maximum aircraft speed at 200 knots. So this means the values you're re re uh, reading here are limited on the left-hand side of this chart by the maximum flying speed. Of course, if you're operating a faster aircraft, the area rate will be larger as well. Um, the new instruments offer a significant improvement about, of about 12% in range performance over the VQ780 and the VQ1560 Mark IIs, as well as a higher pulse repetition rate of 2.2 and 4.4 megahertz. The improved range performance plays a role for point densities uh, smaller than about 7 or 14 points per square meter. This is um, where the curves show this uh, inflection point whereas the higher pulse repetition rate plays out at the higher point densities on the right side of this inflection point. Let me, can, let, let me uh, sum up now some of the product highlights. The instruments achieve an efficiency increase by more than 12% over the VQ780 Mark IIs and the VQ1560 Mark IIs, which is possible, as we just have seen, due to a longer measurement range up to 5,400 meters at a pulse repetition rate of 270 kilohertz for the VQ1260, or the pulse repetition rate of 540 kilohertz, so twice as much for the VQ1460. Um, but this is not only the measurement range increased, all the maximum uh, pulse repetition rate, rate increased by 10% to 2.2 megahertz for the VQ1260, and 4.4 megahertz for the VQ1460. This results, of course, in high effective measurement rates of up to almost 1.5 megahertz for the VQ1260 and almost 3 megahertz for the VQ1460. And this causes extremely dense point clouds with linear scan lines, and this is very unique uh, for these new instruments and a uniform point distribution, similar like the ones of the VQ580 Mark IIs and the VQ780 Mark IIs. So these instruments do not feature a forward-backward look, like uh, with the 1560, but a linear, regular point spacing on the ground over the whole range of pulse repetition rates. The new innovative optical front-end design um, uh, offers an optimum separation of the laser emit and receiver part which leads to minimum atmospheric clutter, so maximum suppression of air points or flying points, and almost no need to clean point clouds in post-processing. Then the instruments feature online waveform processing. This is a standard. Optionally, we can record full waveform data as well, 
onto the integrated data recorder with up to 16 gigabytes per disk, with four disks uh, included. Also, the uh, data recorder stores the images from the cameras. We have the AP60 from Applanix as a standard IMU GNSS system. Um, and if there is a request, we can also implement uh, systems from under other, other vendors as well. Another interesting feature is the built-in drying unit, which actively reduces the humidity inside the housing and releases it to the outside um, uh, to prevent condensation on uh, the apertures of the cameras or the laser scanner. We can integrate up to two RGB cameras, where we typically use phase one, 150 megapixel cameras, and also, as mentioned earlier, the dual camera ad with 280 megapixel cameras fits the same camera bay, or um, optionally also IR cameras, near infrared cameras, and so on. System fits the GSM leveling mounts, um, which enables flying with less side lap. And uh, of course, for large area projects, this uh, increases area yield. Last but not least, the modular design approach provides future upgradability um, to a digital uh, if Yeah, there is there a new uh, techniques or um, options available in the future. So oh, this is about the VQ1260. Um, also the VQ840G has received an update. Uh, maybe it's more facelift in the diet than an update uh, to enable more weight sensitive configurations. The instrument is now uh, reduced in weight by about 2.2 uh, kilograms. This should help operating uh, laser scanning pods like the VQX1 where weight counts and uh, gives you longer endurance for your, for your missions. Uh, the sensor can be optionally equipped with an internal camera like its predecessor. It is compatible with the AP Plus ports um, and also received a redesigned enclosure. Besides of that, there have been uh, no changes uh, to the optic uh, electrical design or the firmware. So the TEF performance, resolution, and uh, parameter features of the VQ840G are maintained in a similar way in the GL model, including the user select receive, uh, receiver field of view, which uh, helps to maximize uh, TEF performance in different environments. Besides of this, eye safety uh, mission uh, objective related to water penetration, spatial resolution, this is all uh, the same and well maintained. A very interesting uh, new feature on the software side um, uh, is, is a, the so called scan data gap detection feature of Require, which is part of our efforts to improve the linear QA processes. Um, we released this new version of Require together with new instruments which uh, need a specific feature which is covered by firmware. Um, we identify gaps in the scan data stream uh, in real time. Um, the gaps are displayed as they are, as they will appear in the point cloud. So aside from the uh, monitoring, rate da monitoring data stream, which comes as a reduced data rate, the gaps uh, showing up as they are in the point cloud in the end uh, on a moving map display and the operator then is immediately um, able to identify the existence of these gaps it may be water surfaces which will not be captured or very very dark uh, surfaces which absorb laser power almost optimally and the operator then can decide to do adjustments on the sensor parameters or the flight profile uh, during the flight in order to capture data without any gaps. So, as I mentioned, this is a feature of Require as well as uh, firmware, uh, which is available with the new instruments. So, now I will hand over to the next slides for Michael. Please go ahead. Thanks, Peter. 
Uh, the popularity of Regal's VP1 helipod sensor suites has meant an expansion of these solutions to accommodate more sensors with configurable sensor orientations for varying application requirements, uh, particularly as it relates to corridor and infrastructure mapping initiatives. The VPX1 pod released a couple years ago enables hybrid sensor configurations with up to three supporting imaging sensors combined with a laser scanner and high accuracy GNSS INSS system within the same enclosure. And all the pods use the same dovetail quick uh, connect system for rapid installation and removal of the pods from the heli mounts. Now the heli pods are compatible with a variety of Regal laser scanners uh, depending on application requirements, including uh, the new VUX160 multi-scan sensor, uh, which I'll provide some expanded detail uh, in the upcoming slides. And this line of portable pod solutions, um, as Peter already discussed, has been further expanded to now include external aircraft installations via the VQX wing pod. The introduction of the VUX120 um, uh, compact scanner with its unique scanning geometry and multi-scan capability has proven to be extremely popular with our UAS users. And this same geometry has now been implemented in the new VUX160 scanner, uh, but with increased range performance to support helicopter and low-flying aircraft on long-duration corridor missions. This compact sensor is available with an extremely high measurement rate of 2.4 megahertz uh, and is capable of producing 400 scan lines per second uh, to effectively distribute so many points. Its large 100 degree field of view enables single pass coverages at lower altitudes so to support right of way width requirements and is capable of capturing no less than five returns per pulse at the full 2.4 megahertz operation. 32 returns per pulse if the target complexity supports it at 300 kilohertz. The GNSS INS OEM board stack has been upgraded to the new AP Plus products from Planix and is available with either the AP30 or AP50 Plus for high accuracy applications. And similarly, camera control electronics for up to five devices have also been relocated to inside the sensor head. Now, both internal and external data storage is possible, including streaming the data directly to an external recording device. Um, the sensor can also be programmed remotely via web interface application. However, for manned operations, the sensor would be most often tethered to a Riaquire software onboard the aircraft for direct sensor control and monitoring. A closer look at the VUX 160's forward and backward scan geometry reveals the advantage it offers over traditional nadir only scan geometries for more complete coverages of vertical structures within a single flight pass. And this largely eliminates the need to physically cant or tilt the sensor. The forward uh, geometry is a plus 10 degree um, off nadir orientation mapping the fronts of vertical objects uh, as the aircraft or sensor uh, pass over uh, the terrain. And of course, the backwards geometry is a minus 10 degree uh, look angle that picks up that same object uh, as the aircraft uh, flies above and past the target. And it also includes the nadir pass through to ensure that objects that are otherwise shadowed by surrounding objects can also be detected. Together, Regal's NFB multi-scan capability provides exceptional single pass data coverages for asset management applications and superior canopy penetration for forestry applications. Now the Vox 160 remains a class one device uh, with a PRR that's user selectable for any value between 300 kilohertz and 2400 kilohertz or 2.4 megahertz. Uh, with altitudes up to 1,800 feet on low reflective targets. Now, maximum PRR can be achieved at 700 feet AGL for similarly low reflective targets. 
in terms of point density, the Vux 160 with its downlook multi-scan field of view and high laser emission rate is capable of a minimum 100 points per meter squared at 700 feet and 40 knots on full footprint targets. The maximum point density in this scenario uh, would be 260 points per meter squared, of course, which is at the center of the scan where it matters the most. And notice the scan pattern of the sensor to the far right of your screen, the data is semi-regular at Nader, but less so as the scan lines diverge from Nader. For right-of-way work where the primary interest is in the asset immediately below the aircraft, this may not be of consequence. However, it is important to be aware that there is a 50% reduction of point density at the scan ends with this type of sensor uh, scan geometry. And from a target coverage perspective, this sensor really is hard to beat with its NFB scan pattern and provides exceptional results for detailed inspection work. So with Peter's earlier comparison of the 12 and 1460 uh, performance profiles to the 780 and 1560, uh, we'll, we'll do the same thing here with the VUX series scanners. Um, you know, the VUX, the VUX 160 is basically capable of almost two times the range performance of the smaller VUX 120 with the same scan geometry. And it has about 20% longer range performance than that of the VUX 240. Now, this is somewhat offset by the smaller field of view of the VUX 240, such that the 160 has a slightly lower operating altitude despite the longer range performance for equivalent PRR emission rates. And for those interested in maintaining consistent point distribution across the entirety of the scan, the VUX 240 remains uh, the sensor of choice for that type of, um, of data distribution. Uh, both have their specific advantages depending on application requirements. Now, switching from helicopters back to aircraft, uh, the recently announced VQX wing pod will soon be ready for sale and delivery, capable of supporting a variety of LiDAR scanners and supporting imaging sensors uh, for any number of applications. And the market response to the VQX one has been truly overwhelming. Now, coupled with the release of the VQ580 Mark IIs discussed earlier in this presentation, this configuration will take full advantage of plentiful aircraft with significantly lower operating costs and still deliver on high productivity surveys to the tune of, of about 400 square kilometers per hour at 4,800 feet, 120 knots for USGS QL zero products requiring two points per meter squared. Uh, or, and that assumes a 20% side lap. So with, with, uh, the uh, uh, single line area coverage rate would be about 500 square kilometers, assuming a 20% side lap would yield 400 uh, square kilometers per hour uh, for two points per square meter. If we look at higher point densities, the Q1 uh, USGS QL1, QL2 data products requiring eight points per square meter, that can be achieved at uh, one kilometer AGL and the same 120 knots. In this case, area coverage rates for this scenario are around 270 to 300 square kilometers per hour. Now, unfortunately, the delays in the STC approval process due to the pandemic is, uh, and, su and supply chain uh, challenges has meant we have not been able to get this pod into the hands of our customers as, as quickly as we had hoped. Um, so I thought I'd, we would provide uh, an update on that. So wh where are we at? Uh, well, the trial flights have been completed now and the EASA certifications for the Cessna 172, 182, 206 series aircraft are in progress. We, we fully expect to receive this certification prior to end of year uh, in 2022. There are over 1200 pages of documentation associated with the STC that covers everything uh, required to power, install, and locate all sensors and peripheral components, including GNSS antenna, data recording units, power distribution box, flight management devices, etc. An integration kit will be provided, as well as an optional secondary cable kit for retrofit on uh, more than one aircraft, if desired. And the last step, of course, will be the submission of the EASA STC and related paperwork to the FAA early in 2023 for validation. Now, users can opt to pursue a local approval with supply documentation from the EASA STC ahead of the formal FAA validation uh, that Regal is pursuing uh, as well. 
And first installations will require the expertise of a Part 66 licensed engineer or Part 145 maintenance organization. However, subsequent removal and reattachment of the pod by the pilot and or the survey staff will no longer require this service. And to make the entire process easier, we have created a checklist such that we can evaluate the specific aircraft to be considered and investigate in advance if there are any conflicts to be aware of. Uh, so are there any existing STCs uh, that might uh, need to be considered uh, with this specific uh, modification? Now, the type of information requested is generally readily available uh, from most platforms. And so we would work with the customer uh, for their specific installation. And finally, all Cessna 172, 182, 206 models are considered in the STC. There are no variant exceptions, and this translates to over 120,000 aircraft worldwide that might be considered candidates. And so with the ever-increasing cost of fuel and limited aircraft availability with an existing survey portal, the VQX-1 really is a timely addition to the Regal product portfolio for turnkey solution for small and large survey firms alike. The following video uh, gives an impression of the mounting effort associated with the VQX wing pod on Rigo's own Cessna 206. Okay, so that comes to the end of the presentation. Um, we do have some time for some questions and uh, we will do our best to uh, answer those now. So Peter, uh, the first question is, will the VQ-1260 replace the VQ-780? Um, similarly, will the VQ-1460 replace the VQ-1560 Mark II? Or more specifically, Will the 780 Mark IIs and 1560 Mark IIs be continued in the future? Um, the instruments um, will be available, of course, in the future. So we will not um, uh, discontinue one of either of the instruments. The 780 um, has its place in the field of airborne laser scanning as its form factor is quite unique. Um, it fits small installations uh, in, in uh, installations in small aircraft, uh, belly pods whatsoever. So there is a quite significant fan base in Europe um, for this uh, kind of instrument, as well as the VQ1560 has its uh, fan base due to the very unique forward and backward looking capability on the outer angles of the scan swath and the native looking capability in the center. It has its advantages um, and we will continue producing these instruments 
as long as there's interest, of course. Um, and maybe related to this question, the VQ 580 Mark II S will replace the VQ 580 Mark II. So that's the only instrument which receives an upgrade. And um, of course, uh, we will not um, uh, promote or sell the older version, which has no advantage compared to the successor now. Okay, great. Um, next question. When will the new VQ1260 and VQ1460 be available? Um, we target um, uh, the Q2 of 2023, so mid of next year. Okay. Um, maybe also, I answered one of the questions um, about the wavelength of the new instruments. Uh, 1260 and VQ 1460 have a one micron, so 1064 nanometers wavelength. Um, Michael, I'm not sure. I'm looking through the, the questions and I see another one. Are there any? environmental restrictions with the pod in regards to temperature. So our instruments operate from zero to 40 degrees Celsius. It's the same for the pod then. Um, this means ambient temperature typically, um, it's, maybe it's critic, it's, it's important to state that um, the, the temperature of the instrument when they are switched on is critical um, as soon as their power dissipation is large enough and they heat themselves, they will operate as well to lower temperatures, but zero to 40 degrees is critical. Okay, good. Um, another question, is the scan gap feature of Ryacquire available for existing VQ1560i or Mark II to 2S systems? Um, as I mentioned, it's a feature um, based on firmware of the instrument as well as in software, so the latest version of Require, which is easy to download. But we uh, have to check if um, the instrument would be capable of running the new firmware. So this depends uh, on, on the age of the instrument and uh, the electronics inside. We should check this based on the serial number. And um, if it's possible, yes, we can talk about doing a firmware upgrade. But this needs okay. to be discussed in, by detail. Okay, uh, no problem. Now, uh, another question is, um, can you explain the scan pattern differences in more detail between the 1460 or 1260 compared to the 1560? Okay, I think, um, yeah, I think you mentioned it, we've got this forward backward look. So the scan pattern of the VQ 1560 are, is it, dual channel design, which um, features two linear scan patterns, but the scanning directions are slightly rotated about the vertical by 14 degrees for each channel. So they include rotation, but the yaw axis by about 28 degrees. And that's why we have got a more or less random looking point pattern, point distribution on the ground when these two linear scan patterns interfere on the ground. Um, the 1260 and the VQ1460 feature a linear scan pattern, so matrix scan pattern, if you like to call it, um, measurement per measurement, like uh, yeah, on, a, on a straight, how to say, um, measurement per measurement on a straight line, and then line by line, uh, the scan builds up. So it's a regular point pattern. We have got 30 degree um, scan direction of nadir. So plus minus 30 degree gives 60 degree field of view. And that's the major uh, difference. The regular and linear point spacing with a very homogeneous point density across the swath is some is a demand in many, many tenders in Europe. Um, I'm not sure about the US, maybe you can comment on this, but that's the major difference of these instruments besides, uh, yeah. I yeah. Think long um, measurement range and no, that's, that's, those are, uh, you know, that's, that's a good summary, Peter. Um, I mean, generally speaking in the US uh, and many other areas, the crossfire scan pattern um, has been instrumental in providing, you know, below canopy 
uh, penetration, um, improve vertical surface detail with this um, uh, uh, unique uh, crossfire geometry. Uh, for those applications that are focused in that type of data collection, that sensors uh, really excelled. Uh, for those that are looking, as you mentioned, for more rasterized grid-like patterns, uh, predictable point distribution um, across the full width of the scan, or for those tenders that demand um, the similar resolution of the scan ends as at Nader, um, the 1260 and the 1460 point patterns, uh, which are largely consistent with many of our other uh, matrix scan sensors, um, I think will be uh, will, will be an option for, for customers to consider. We're getting to the top of the hour. Uh, any additional questions, we will take them down and respond uh, back to you individually. The presentation itself will be uploaded to the Rego um, uh, portal, the uh, the, um, uh, the YouTube channels, uh, the webinar um, portals, so that you can access those and review them on your own time. And so on behalf of, of Peter, myself, and the entire Rego team, we thank you for your participation in today's webinar and wish you a great day. Thank you very much as well, and have a nice day. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.